costume. Welcome back. It's another Wednesday cross stitch happy hour. Uh, I'm Erin, the Two Martini Stitcher, both here on YouTube and Instagram, and uh, this is a channel about cross stitch. So if you're new here and you're interested in cross stitch, settle in. And if you're a returner, welcome back. So glad to have you guys all back. And if you're new and you like what you hear and thought it was fun, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it is Wednesday, December 18th. We are a week from Christmas, people. <laughs> I am starting to feel a little... <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, part of it is that I've been fighting a little bit of a stomach bug the past couple days, so just water today for um, cross stitch happy hour because I don't think, I'm not sure alcohol is the best thing to be putting in my stomach right now. Uh, but, um, yeah, I, so partially that, but partially it's a week till Christmas and we're actually doing our family Christmas a day early. So I've got less than a week. I think I need to get serious about getting stuff done. I did get all of the out of town gifts wrapped and shipped. So that is taken care of. And I started wrapping. We actually don't do a huge Christmas around here. I mean, the kids get a few things, but we don't go all out crazy. We like to travel as a family and the kids know that that's kind of our priority. And so they always get, you know, they get kind of a bigger wish from Santa and then a couple other things. But we don't do a huge, huge Christmas. So I say that I have a lot to catch up on, but we don't do a ton anyway, but I haven't done hardly any of it. <laughs> I really need to get moving. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much, it's pretty much where I'm at. How are you guys doing? How is, how is everybody else feeling a week out from Christmas? <laughs> I mean, part of it too is, uh, the youngest is still in school. She's in school till Friday. The two younger girls, the middle and the youngest, have four shows for their dance studio over the weekend, and then we've got two days, and then we leave for family trip. So it also just kind of feels like there's still a lot going on. Uh, the middle and the oldest are working a lot. They've been out of school for a couple weeks. Uh, their colleges are, were done <laughs> uh, with finals like a week or two ago, and so they've just been working a lot. And so we just haven't done uh, the typical things that we normally do. We did get a chance on Sunday, this past Sunday, to, we always, family tradition, we go see the holiday show at Fifth Avenue Theater. It's not always a holiday show, but it's, they do a very kind of their big family friendly show is over the holiday season. So this year it is a premiere a world premiere of a new musical of Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> and it was fantastic. It's headed to Broadway when it closes here. It was great. The cast was amazing. It looks like most of the cast is slated for the Broadway opening. Highly recommend. It was great. So Sunday was a fun family day, but it's the first time the whole family has been together in weeks. <laughs> and it's yeah, we're just, it's a busy time of year, busy time of year. So I have been stitching. I have been working um, on some things. I don't have any finishes. As a matter of fact, you can see I didn't even FFO my Flossmas ornament. So it's, I just stuck it up on my board. Uh, I'll, I'll get that finished. I also have not yet fully finished my daughter's pillow. I will do that this weekend. That will happen this weekend. I promise it will be done. It will be gifted to her for Christmas. But you're probably just going to see a picture of it on Instagram because I don't have it done for this week. But I did bring up the girl's stockings to show you because we did finally decorate. That was the other thing. Like the tree wasn't even decorated <laughs> until Sunday. So but we decorated the tree and the stockings are all with the tree decoration. So those came out. And these stockings have pretty much been, up until the past year, what I have stitched for like 20 years. No, yeah, well, 18 years since Sarah was born. So they're all Dimensions Gold Kit stockings. And uh, I started 
my oldest, Sarah's, I started hers like maybe a month or two after she was born. Oh, I should have brought mine up. Oh, to show you mine. Uh, I wanted to stitch stockings for them because my stocking um, was in my head when I thought about it. I thought it was cross stitched by my aunt. It's actually like a needle point that's done with yarn uh, on what looks to be like a much bigger like canvas material, but I loved it. It's what I had all growing up. It's what I still use. And I wanted to make that kind of heirloom stocking for my daughter. So this is the one that I made for her. Her name's Sarah. And, um, I started this, I think like October of 2001 and I finished it in November of 2002. So I worked on it all that year. I'll show you. There's these, kits they're beasts and so this was i had done a little bit of stitching i learned to stitch as a like preteen, probably when i was about 12 or so uh my mom and her friend were my girl scout leaders and they both cross stitched and so we did i, I don't know if it was a cross stitch it was probably some kind of like craft or needlework badge that we learned to cross stitch and i thought it was fun I'm not sure I did anything more. I might have done one other little kit after that. I then didn't pick it up again until after I graduated from college and I did just a couple little kit things as gifts for my in-laws. And then this was really the first big project I ever took on. And you can see it is on 18 count Navy Ada. I didn't know that that was hard. I just did it, right? And there's all kinds of like beads and you like, and blending filament. <laughs> and these kits are amazing because you even do like half stitches with different numbers of threads to get that kind of texture to it or that kind of, I don't know, that kind of actual dimension. It seems cheesy on a dimensions kit. Anyway, so this is Sarah's stocking. It took me, as I said, a little over a year to do with a baby. I finished this in November of 2002. And immediately, and I was due with our middle with Abby at the beginning of December in 2002. My first two are 15 months apart. Oops. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. People ask me all the time, oh, did you do that on purpose? No. I don't know anybody who does that on purpose. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, but so I was already pregnant with, well, I was about to have Abby. She was, I was like eight months pregnant with Abby when I finished Sarah's stocking. And so I immediately bought another Dimensions Gold kit for Abby and started it right away. My mom was out to visit and to like help out when Abby was born. And like she stayed almost, she came right at the beginning of December and stayed almost the whole month when Abby was born. And uh, then when she came out for Christmas the next year, I'll show you Abby's stocking. It's another Dimensions Gold kit. So this is also done on navy blue Ada, although there is very little negative space in this. This is almost full coverage, this one. So this is Abby's. Abigail stocking. Um, so when my mom came back a year later, I had like this much <laughs> of this stocking stitched a year later. And she said, you know, you have two very small children now. And I don't think, I mean, I, she goes, I don't know that you're going to have time to finish that because when she came out the year before, when Abby was about born, she actually did the fully finish on this stocking for me because I was terrified to like cut it out. And, uh, she's pretty good with a sewing machine. And so she did the fully finish on Sarah's stocking for me. So then when she came out the next year, she said, do you want me to fully finish Abby's stocking? And I said, uh, that would be great, but it's not done being stitched. And seriously, I had, um, look at that little back stitch pulled. Uh, I seriously had like, I think like this much done. I had part of her dress, I know, but I had maybe like this much done. And mom said, why don't I take it and finish it? I will stitch it. Cause she is very, a very nice stitcher. She doesn't anymore, but when she does, <laughs> It's beautiful, it's just not a hobby that she has anymore. So she took it 
and was going to stitch it. And then they moved twice and one of my grandmothers passed away and they had to take care of that. I think they moved again. I don't think she ever, <laughs> I, she didn't work on it. I didn't work on it. Every year we would hang up stockings and we would hang up Sarah's beautiful stocking and then the store-bought one that I had for Abby. And then I proceeded to have a third daughter. And for years, Sarah had a homemade, I know, right? Therapy jar, lots of money in their therapy jars. <laughs> so fast forward like nine, 10 years, nine years, Abby's 10 years old. And I think I mentioned um, a couple of times that she was in a production at the Fifth Avenue Theater one Christmas. And, but she was a minor. And so you had to like check them in and out all the time. I had, I was spending a lot of time hanging around downtown Seattle while she was working essentially, uh, at Fifth Avenue. And while we were hanging out, there was an area underneath the theater where they would let the kids out and you would like sign them out. And so the parents would sometimes, like if it was a short turnaround, there were a bunch of tables there. It's kind of this, this downstairs area. It's kind of a, an underground food court in between a mall area. Anyway, there were all these tables and the parents would sit there of the kids that were in the production and wait for them to come in and out. You take them out, you check them back in. And a couple moms would be there knitting. And this one mom did wool felting. And I thought, yeah, that's a problem. That I should, I should do something with this time other than just like read or play on my phone. Not that reading is a bad way to spend your time, but I'm looking at that going, I should, I should do something crafty with this time that I just have to hang around Seattle. And I thought about Abby's Christmas album because or Christmas stocking because it was Christmas season. So I called up my mom and I said, hey mom, do you still have Abby stocking? And she said, I wouldn't have gotten rid of it. I am sure it is here somewhere. I will find it and bring it with us at Christmas because they were coming to visit and see Abby in the show. Great. That didn't solve my problem for right then and there. So what I decided to do was to purchase a stocking kit for our youngest, for Rebecca, and start that. Let me tell you how well that went over with Abby when she came out and was like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm working on, I'm cross-stitching a stocking. And she's like, is it my stocking? And I'm like, no, it's your younger sister's stocking. But this is the one that I picked out and started for Rebecca that year. So this is Rebecca's stocking, which don't tell anybody. I think is the most beautiful out of the three of them. There's just something about that Santa in his like gray suit. And this one is just, there are so many beads. Can you guys see? And French knots. Once again, this is done on white Ada. And there's some negative space, but not a lot. This is also almost full coverage. And there's just all kinds of metallic and cording that is couched on and it's it's a beaut it's really pretty so i started that one that would have been in 2012. so i started becca's in 2012 and then over christmas my mom did bring me abby's and she had gotten, she had worked her way this way and had like this much done. So now I had like a strip like here <laughs> done on Abby's and I had a start on Becca's. And I decided that rather than put down Becca's and try to kind of reorient myself to Abby's, that I would finish Becca's first. A lot of money in Abby's therapy jar. It's fine. She... <laughs> My kids all joke that Abby is the time and money suck in the family, and they're not wrong. She's kind of a high maintenance girl. So yeah, middle child syndrome. So I, it took me, I think I finished Becca's, it took me a long time, because we're pretty, I mean, by then I had a seven-year-old, a 10-year-old, and an 11-year-old, and they were all pretty busy, um, and I was driving a lot and it took me two years 
I wasn't stitching every day. Like I would stitch on it a lot for a couple months and then I would kind of like, now I know lose my sticky, stitchy bug. And I think it's because at the time, this was all I was working on. So when I got sick of this project, I just didn't want to stitch anymore. And then it would be months before I would pick it back up again. So it took me, I want to say three years to finish, to finish, no, maybe two years. I think maybe it took me two years. Uh, I think I finished this in 2014. No, 2015, probably 2015. It took me several years to finish Becca's. Hers is done. And then I did pick up Abby's and work on it. And I was working on it frantically last year. And she said, if you don't finish it this year, you owe me lots of extra presents because I'm the only one that doesn't have one. So I finally finished Abby's last year in 2018. So those are their stockings. And I love them. And they love them. But I will never live down that I that Abby's was last, that she was the second child, but hers was the last one done. And then it took me 16 years to do it. <laughs> so there you guys go. 16 minutes in, and you now have the full story of the girls' Christmas stockings. But they're beautiful. And I even did the fully finish on both Becca's and Abby's. And they came out pretty good. They're not as great as my mom's, but they work and they look beautiful hanging up. And someday I will do stockings in a much more expedient fashion. I will do stockings for their spouses and their children. But for now, I've offered to do one for my husband time and time again, and he says it's fine and he doesn't need one. Maybe someday I will make him one. Or maybe not because I have lots of other stuff to stitch. So what have I been stitching on this week? So I was working on, I did do all of my homework. I was not, I think when I talked to you guys last week, I said, oh, this might be the week that I don't get it all done. I did. I got everything uh, done for both Enchanting Stitches and the School of Magical Stitches last week. And I've been plugging away on this week's as well. Although I think I am going to end up doing some penalty stitches in School of Magical Stitches because I, right now I just have some goals. Here is my December 24 hour cross stitch acrostic. And I just have some goals on here that I want to meet. And those projects don't quite match up with some stuff in School of Magical Stitches. So I think I'm gonna do penalty stitches. But I need to clarify how that works because I've not, I've not ever done penalty, pen, no T stitches, I think except once before. And so now it says 200 stitches, 250 for penalty. So I don't know if that's in addition that I would need 450 for that task or if it's 200, but normal or two or 250 for penalty. I need to clarify that. That's neither here nor there. Uh, the first thing I did work on all week, and I have been on a tear on Harry Potter book covers, guys. On a tear. I started that next page right away, and I think I realized, like, I'm going to be gone. We're going to be out of town for a week, and I'm not going to be able to work on it. I wanted to finish up uh, Full Coverage Fanatics. I needed one more set of 1,200 stitches to do to finish out the by the numbers for the whole year. And so I just went on a tear and I did all 1200 stitches. I was doing like two blocks a night. So I finished it last night. So between last week when I filmed and showed you the page finish and this week, 1200 stitches on Harry Potter book covers. You guys ready to see? It is looking so good. So there's more of the unicorn coming in. You can see his leg, because his legs will be right here of him running. And then here you can see is the start of like that bottom, just kind of diamond checkerboardy pattern where it says JK Rowling. So I'm already making awesome progress. When I come, I'll do here, 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 and then I'll hit the corner of that page. 
So by the end of the week, I'll have hit the corner of that page. And I just, I think some of it is, I'm just so excited. Like once I rip through this page, that's the first book done. And I just, I just want that. I just want that first book done because that's going to feel like a huge milestone. And uh, I also kind of wanted to see how doing two blocks a night felt because I'm thinking that in January, when I start Farewell to Anger, I was trying to figure out how I was going to juggle two full coverage pieces. I think I'm going to switch off weeks. So one week it'll be Farewell to Anger and one week it'll be Harry Potter book covers. But if I do that, then I really want to do 200 stitches a night in both pieces. So, in, I mean, in each piece. So I want to do two weeks worth of stitching in that one week. And, and that's not any, like, I say two weeks worth of stitching. That's just fully in my head. When I decided that I was going to do Harry Potter book covers as a focus piece, I just said a block of 100 every day so that I, and I feel like that way I see good progress on it. And it doesn't get discouraging because I'm always constantly making decent progress on the piece. So I think come January, that's what I'm going to do. I think they'll switch off weeks. So uh, we come back. I'll start actually Farewell to Anger on the 2nd. I looked. Our flight gets in really late. I'm not going to get a start on that January 1. <laughs> oh, well. Because uh, I don't even think we'll be home until... I don't think we'll be home home until the 2nd, actually. So... Uh, that'll be a Thursday. So I think actually Farewell Angle will get 10 days when I first start it, and then I'll go back to Harry Potter book covers. So I think that's also why I'm on a tear with this one right now, because I'm not going to touch it again until then, like the second week of January. But look. So good. So good. So good. So that's Harry Potter book covers. And then I really couldn't tell you guys, seriously, I feel so scattered. I feel so... I feel floopy, as people would say. I feel very floopy. So I have no idea what tasks any of this was for. Sorry. I don't know. This is just what I've worked on in the past week. Um, I started January yearbook because, you know, that needs to get done by the time I get back. And here is my start on it. So I have a pretty decent start because I've got the three trees. I almost have all of January. I'm going to try to fit these, and I don't know. This might just go with me on the trip. I, I might just end up taking a bunch of little smalls that are easy to work on, So, and then it'll be done hopefully when I get back. But I wanted to get started on it because I didn't want to feel the pressure of I have to finish it. Well, I mean, we've got long flights, so there will be plenty of stitch time. I get lots of stitching done while traveling, but I didn't want to have the pressure of like, oh, I have to finish these on vacation. So I wanted to at least start them. Uh, the next one I worked on was uh, also Lizzie Kate, Holly and Hart's Mystery Sampler. And I'm loving this stitch. I now see the appeal of band samplers, guys. I see the appeal of band samplers. Not that this is truly a band sampler, but this section I'm working on kind of feels like it. So, and I bought this as like all kitted up off of Stash Unload. So this is the Call For Fabric 28 Count Doubloon. But I picture this plus with all the called for weeks flosses, weeks styworks flosses. And so I did this line of trees. I did a couple more of these diamondy things and I started working this border down this way. But I really kind of am loving this kind of pattern because I feel like, you know, I work on this section and by the time I'm like sick of that repeating pattern, then I'm on to something else. And by the time I did that, I was tired of those little trees. <laughs> this kind of uh, sampler works with my short attention span. So there we go. So that's Holly and Hearts. Doo, doo, doo. What's next? Up next is Silver Creek Samplers. My Christmas list. Love this piece. Love this piece. This might be a focus piece for next year. I don't know. It'd be a push to get it done, but I would love to have this done for next year. So this is, and this is on 16 count Ada in Wren with the call for DMC. And I did woolen sweaters and I don't have the sweater totally finished, but 
a good start. And I goofed somewhere on the sweater and I cannot find somewhere in this sleeve. And I can't find the mistake and I'm not pulling it out. And so I just fudged it a little bit, but it's not gonna matter. Like it's in the correct placement. It's just something with that sleeve is off. I don't know. I don't know, but that's the nice thing with this though, is that it, it's ultimately fudgeable because there's like, things aren't really connected. So there we go, there's woolen sweaters. Don't know why the dog is barking. Sorry, hopefully you guys can't hear that. It's probably barking at deer outside. He was going nuts this morning because there were deer walking through our backyard. Okay, next thing I worked on, whoo, we're having a Lizzie Kate kind of day. It, oh, somebody's at the door. That's why he's going nuts. I'm sure it's a delivery. Uh, Lizzie Kate Tingles. And I started this one October 31st. I am doing them all together. And I am doing this on a 16 count or 14 count Ada in the colorway prank. I clearly just wadded up my fabric and threw it back in there, guys. Oof. Okay. There we go. And I got, this is almost done. I'm really tempted if I get all my homework done and I have time to just knock out the rest of this. Uh, Cause you can see all I have left are these, is this little border at the bottom, just the little candy corns and doodads there. He looks kind of creepy cause the buttons go in those blank spots. <laughs> so he looks kind of creepy for right now, but, but there we go. And then I, I, I'd love to put this away with, um, that in like completed and ready for the next block. And this is another one that as I start to think of plans, I would I would really like to maybe be able to do one block a month and then it would be done by Halloween. It probably wouldn't be fully finished, but it would be done by Halloween next year. So I think that may be a focus. That might be my like dark 13 stitching because I stitched this last Friday during Friday the 13th. Managed to make it fit a task too. Uh, that one I know was for enchanting stitches because we were supposed to stitch in Santa Claus colors, so either red, black, or white, and I stitched all that black. So, I mean, I can probably make it fit a challenge every month, so we'll see. That would be nice. I'm still thinking about plans, and I will. I printed out and got all bound the 24 hours of cross stitch planner that uh, Jen Lee from Quirks and Stitches put out. I'm oh, so excited about it, guys. Wait till you see it. Okay, and then just randomly for fun because I thought I might be able to get it done, I picked up the winter holiday and started the beading because all I had left was the beading. And you guys, I'm so close and I just have not, I haven't felt well. I haven't had time to get back to it, but dang, this is so close to a finish. Look at that. I got all of these beads in and all around. It's just down here. There's some like green and tan beads that go down there. It's so close to being done. And then you think, oh, well, that's like nothing. That'd be 15 minutes, but it's really not because it's beading. It's going to take me. I need an hour and I just haven't had an hour. But I worked on it and I'm so close. I really love to just have it done and up. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. All right. And then this week I started, that brings us to this week's homework. So I ha actually have this written down with me. So for something witty in School of Magical Stitches and an object to think of me, I worked on Little House Needleworks Cardinal Winter. I think this is really kind of cute and witty because it says tweet and they turn the snowflakes into notes. That's really witty. That's pretty clever, I thought. And then something to think of me is the cardinals, the birds, even though I'm kind of scared of large groups of birds, I do love birds and I have a bird tattoo. Actually, it's three birds for my girls. So, and I clearly just left my needle in here with my thread hanging. I'm stitching this on 18 count Ada in Country Mocha. And that's where I got. So 250 stitches was the little bunnies and the snow and the start of a tree. I thought this, like on my acrostic, I was like, oh, I can, I had a whole bunch of finishes. I mean, I still have it down. Instead of doing, I did a non-tracking, 
Option of finishes. So I had that I was going to finish another chalkboard ornament. I was going to finish January yearbook, finish Snow House, The Little Snowman, Lizzie Kate, and finish Cardinal Winter. That seems reasonable, right? I mean, maybe it would have been if I hadn't also done the Flossmas ornament and Bendy Stitchy's Noel <laughs> pattern, uh, but there we go. It's just, these are more stitching than you think they are. <laughs> They're deceptive little buggers. Because <laughs> you just think, well, that's just nothing. But it's really not. There's a lot of like border going on there. The trees are kind of big. Mm. But this might go with me. I mean, I might finish this up. And because I feel like this is more of a wintry, like I don't, that doesn't feel super Christmassy to me. I feel like I could leave that up January and part of February if I finish it. So, and then the next one I worked on was for something in the night before Christmas, the book, The Night Before Christmas for Enchanting Stitches. I worked on Holiday Quaker by Lila Studio, because look, Santa and his reindeer. Those were on the night before Christmas. And I think that these may be penalty stitches for School of Magical Stitches. And this is on 36 count pearl gray linen, which I think is just a swagger color. And I am using the called for threads, which is a mix of general arts and DMC. And here's where I got to. So I did essentially most of this angel. I had his gold hair done, but I did all of the outline, his face, and then filled in one wing with white. And that was 250 stitches, folks. This is a big one. <laughs> this is not a goal to finish next year. I love working on it. I just, I, I love Quakers. I love all these motifs, but it's kind of big. <laughs> it's kind of big. So this will probably not be a 2020 finish, but I love stitching on it when it comes out to play. <laughs> And it's in my beautiful cardinal bag by Diddly Daddle Designs. Diddly Design. Mm. You all know. You you know, and I'll link her below. I always do. Uh, that's a good reminder for you guys. I put like if I if the words come out of my mouth about an Etsy shop or a designer or something, I link all their information below, and I also put all of my whip information, the whips that I talk about. I put all that information below. Uh, the Dimensions Gold Kits, these are old. I'm not sure you'll be able to get a hold of those. Uh, this one actually, I think it was in Stitch Mania. Stitch Mania group, someone had posted, and the, you know, you guys have all seen these posts. It happens every once in a while that people say, what is the post up? Tell us what your unicorn chart is. Which I think it's always kind of fun to see what everybody else's are because I haven't been around long enough to really no, and so I find, I sometimes see things, I'm like, oh, I've never seen that before. Someone had posted up Abby Stocking. They said, I would love to stitch this. Well, I still had the chart and all the extra threads because I kept it in case something happened to her, to it. Um, and of course it's like lime, so I don't know how I get to it to fix it. But I thought, oh, if something, you know, really happened to it and it, you know, I don't know. Some of the stitches got ruined. I could maybe fix it. <laughs> I don't know. But so I still have the chart. I mean, as I said, this kit was now 17 years old. But I still have the chart and all the leftover threads. Because Dimensions kits, it's not, it might be DMC thread. I don't know. But their numbers don't match DMC or Anchor. Like, it's their own numbering system. So there's no way to know what those floss colors are, but I had all the extra flosses, like what was left from the kit. And so I was able to send the chart, which wasn't in the greatest shape because I didn't know about making a working copy. I hadn't like highlighted it, but it was all like it folds out as a big thing. And I had just taped the seams and used it. So it wasn't in the best shape, but totally readable, legible. Uh, so I was able to send um, a gal the chart and the extra flosses so that she could match them to DMC or whatever 
glasses she wanted to use. So that just, oh, that made my heart so happy. I was just shocked. I'm scrolling, 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 and there's a picture of Abby stocking. So not the same as getting the full kit, but at least should be able to stitch it if she really wanted to. So anyhow, that was exciting. I don't know what got me off on that tangent. As I said, floopy today, guys. Okay, and the last thing I worked on that I'm not even done with the number of stitches I need yet, but I figured I'd show it to you anyway. Uh, I worked on chalkboard ornament, Be Jolly. I've already finished Believe. I'm working on Be Jolly. These will maybe be done next year. And there's another set of these. There might be two, two more sets of these chalkboard ornaments. They're super fun to stitch, guys. I might eventually want to do them all, but there's so many ornament series that I want to do. Um, so I'm working on Big Jolly, and I'm doing this on 16 count chalkboard Ada with the called four colors. And there we go. So I've just got these stems in. I'm starting the leaf. I haven't gone very far. <laughs> I haven't gone very far in this today. But uh, I was working on it while I was waiting for Abby at a doctor's appointment this morning. And that's as far as I got. So that's all the whips. That's all I've been working on this week. Um, so going forward, let's see, rest of the year, I will not have a regular floss tube next week because uh, we're not gonna be around, but I am going to film a whip parade. <laughs> I, already people's whip parades are coming out and I am, I'm loving it. I love a whip parade. So if you guys don't, don't watch it, but I love a whip parade. So I'm going to do a full whip parade. I'm going to film that before we go. And that'll drop uh, probably the weekend after Christmas. Because coming back, I don't know that I'll be right back again that Thursday. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm not really sure what it's going to look like right after the first of the year. Uh, but it's going to be, guys, it, two weeks. Two weeks until the new year. <gasps> I'm so excited for all the 2020 plans. Okay, so let's talk 2020 plans because um, this sort of leads into haul. Because some of this, I'll do haul and then we'll do 2020 plans. And I'll do haul, giveaway, 2020 plans. So if you don't care, I don't have a ton of specific plans, but I do want to show you my planner because I'm in love with it. So uh, I do have a little bit of haul. This week, uh, my bag of the month from So Much to Love came and it is, oh you guys, it's so good. Oh, you got a little sneak peek of it. So the, the thing I love about the So Much to Love Bag of the Month Club is you get not only an amazing bag that's a surprise, but they're always just fantastic, but they're filled with other fun little extra goodies that are a total surprise. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what was in it what came with it first. You always get a thing of stash tea. We got Christmas morning, black and green tea. Mm. Yay. A beautiful uh, magnetic needle minder from A Needle Runs Through It. Look at that. Little cardinal, I love that. Mm. It's a little wood one, and then, Sometimes you get an exclusive pattern. This one was not an exclusive, but I don't I don't care. You send me a free pattern. All right. But she always puts a lovely little note in there and she said this wasn't an exclusive. So it's not an exclusive to the bag of the month club, but she felt like it was just so perfect and it is. And I totally want to stitch it up right now. Uh, it's by the Floss Box. So if you like this, you can go get it from the Floss Box and it's called Cardinal Days. Look at that, the house and the cardinal and the little sheep. I honestly might admit the sheep. I'm not a sheep person. I might just leave the sheep off and do more snow, but look how cute that is. And it all matches the bag perfectly because you guys, oh, oh, look at that gorgeousness. Those gorgeous birds and flowers. And of course her little felt heart and then the inside is white with red snowflakes. I love it so much. Okay, so that, oh wait, there was something else. I almost forgot, I'm like, wait, there was something else. And then we also got a color and cotton 
uh, Bing Cherry. So I'll totally use that on that pattern. Look how good that color is. Oof, oof, that's cardinal red. It's not quite as bright as it's showing there. It's a little darker. Color and Cotton Bing Cherry. And I'm not in like a Color and Cotton Thread of the Month Club, so I always love getting a little Color and Cotton Thread. They're fun. Okay, so there was that. I also, speaking of Color and Cotton, I got an order in from Color and Cotton that I had actually placed a while ago with my uh, coupon from the Mystery Harvest box. And so these were the two, so I'd gone and used that to order a couple of fabrics. And so I got 36 count uh, River Rock. I love that color. Guys, that is, whew, that's a good, and I would buy that again in a heartbeat. And I also got a 32 count in Caraway. And it's, it's a little like topier maybe then it's showing up there. I don't know. That's a good color too. That's perfect. Like it's a great sampler color. Actually, they both are. So those are really good. Love those. And they sent um, a couple little flosses. It says a gift for you, four yards each. And I kind of feel like they almost match the fabrics. I don't know if they're meant to, but they kind of do. So that's a fun little surprise. Thank you, Color and Cotton. So those are great going into the stash. I'll need them for next year since I'm stitching from stash. One of the things I realized I did not mention when we were talking about stitch from stash and I was saying, oh, you know, you set your budget is I don't think that I mentioned that you get like credit towards your budget for finishes. So there's an incentive to finish, which I like. So I'd originally been thinking like, oh, it would be $25 plus a piece of linen but one, I do have a pretty good stash of linen, so I don't know that I'm really going to need to buy much fabric next year, but also some finishes would give me some money for, for fabric. Yes, yes, yes it would. Um, I also got a package from um, Annie the Joyfield Super from her D-Stash, some things that I had gotten from her D-Stash order. And uh, when she had her D-Stash, I got this piece of Ada, it's a Ship Manners Ada. It says July Prim, and it's a 16 count Ada. But look at that blue, isn't that pretty? I will find something nice to stitch on that pretty blue. And she also had a couple lots of color and cotton flosses up. That's loud and crinkly, so sorry. And so I snagged one of those. And so these were the set of color and cotton. I don't know. I think they must have been like a limited edition because none of them have a name. There's no names on any of these, but they are pretty. There's some blue. I love this green. This kind of sagey green. That's like a periwinkle. Those are like pretty. So those will go into the floss dash. And then I ordered, and you guys may laugh, and probably should laugh, because you'll say, mm, didn't you just show us this pattern last week? Yes, yes, I did. I apparently forgot I had it and ordered from her Strawberry Fields Forever. <laughs> she bought it, decided she wasn't going to stitch it. I apparently want to stitch it so much, I bought it twice. <laughs> so guess what will be in my giveaway at some point, probably when I start this. I love it. I love the big, what is, is this the field? Is this the strawberry field or is this a ridiculously large vase? What do we think? In my head, I kind of want it to be a ridiculously large vase that is two stories high. But I think being that strawberry fields forever, this might be a strawberry field with the strawberry growing out of it. In my head, it's a two story vase. Okay. We'll see. Um, oh, speaking of Annie Joyfield Stitcher, this was another purchase this week. She opened her Etsy shop and put her first two designs in her Etsy shop, and I had to run out and get one right away. Look at that squirrel welcome. Look at the cute little squirrels with their little acorn beret, jaunty little hats. So cute. So uh, it is Joyfield stitches joy filled stitches and i'll link her etsy below because you know you want those little squirrels look how cute they are perfect for the squirrel cell uh i also ordered 
Uh, another friend of mine, Jen, she's Spunky Jen on Instagram and um, Stitching in the Bluegrass here on YouTube. She is crazy enough to start and a forest crew with me on Arbor Day. And she showed that she got this needle minder from Abby, top knot, for that piece. So of course, you know, I had to go out and order that one for our sow. It's a little big though. I gotta say, it's a little big because I stitch in hand, so I don't know if that's gonna weigh down the fabric too much, but it is gorgeous. It's wood and all laser cut. And since I was on uh, Abby's Etsy shop, you know I had to get some more needle winders. She sent this one along for me for free. Thank you so much. I love getting fun little surprises. And that's a pretty tree too, so that might go on in a forest group as well. And then I got Coco Cafe. It'll be cute for a winter stitch. I got coffee and donuts because who does not love coffee and donuts? I've eyed this one for a while. I love cross stitching. And then check this out. She has ones that are like neon bar signs, but look at that. It's a martini glass. I had to have that. You know I had to order that. So new needle minders from Abby Topknot. I just love her needle minders. They're like they're so good and such great prices and you should go check her out. See, listen to how strong that magnet is. And I really like that she has like these like light, lightweight acrylic ones because um, cause I do stitch in hand, so I don't like anything that's too big or heavy and I just threw it on the floor. Um, cause it'll dark down my fabric. And then the last thing I have isn't really a purchase, but it will be a giveaway uh, at one point. Um, the designer from Rav Rovaris, which is an Etsy shop. She has her designs in an Etsy shop, Rovaris. Uh, I believe she's in Italy. Yes, she's from Italy. And she contacted me and asked if I would want some patterns for giveaways. Yes, yes, please. I want some patterns for giveaways. And so she sent them to me. And guys, they won. They're super cute. I'll link her shop below. And it all they all come with, oh, except for that one, they all come with like little charms or finishing details, and you know I love that. Uh, so these are the ones that she sent me, and these will go in the pile for giveaways. This one's very timely, look at that gingerbread. And it comes with a little jingle bell and felt hearts for finishing. Um, oh, this is like very, Timely since I'm headed to the beach. Happiness is walking on the beach and it comes with charms. We have this little pretty springy one, Daisy. And that one comes with charm and trim to do this trim, to do the little finishing and the charm. Love this one. I mean, who's not gonna love that one? A little October 31. It comes with a spider. And then this one is just cool. Look, it's like mermaid and pirate skeleton. That's pretty cool. So thank you so much to her for sending those along and those will go in the giveaways. So these will be giveaways. So let's do the giveaway. Since I'm talking about giveaways, giveaway from last week was this th set of three Christmassy card and ornaments. Uh, there's Noel. Season's greetings, and then this little lace poinsettia one, because I was in an ornament making mood last week. Uh, and I ended up doing, because I haven't been feeling all that great. I did read everybody's comments. I responded to a bunch of them, but I always heart your comments. So if your comment has a heart, you know I read it and I saw it and I love all the comments so much, guys. Uh, but I ended up doing the random comment picker just to save me time this week. And the winner was Loretta Henderson. So you can see ornaments was the word. So Loretta Henderson, you won. You won the ornaments. So pop me uh, an email or Instagram message with your mailing address and I will get these out to you this weekend. So you probably won't get them before Christmas, but they'll be all in your stash to stitch for next year. So my last little bit of haul had to do with my 2020 planner. Uh, I told you guys all that I had purchased Jen Lee's Quirks and Stitches 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Planner on Etsy. I will link it below. Uh, it's 
84, 86 pages of printables. And they're amazing. Uh, and so I printed it all out. Pardon me. Lots of talking. So I printed it all out, but I wasn't really sure how I wanted to organize it. I love a spiral binding, but I knew that I might want to add stuff throughout the year or add blank pages. So I thought maybe a binder, but I didn't love the idea of just a binder. And then someone had commented on my video from last week that they were going to disc bind theirs. And then Jen did a video, I'll link it below, where she shows hers that she printed, printed out and disc bound. I didn't know anything about disc binding. So I Googled it. <laughs> And I went down another rabbit hole. Uh, and so just as I'm doing all this, hmm, disc binding, that's interesting. I see Jen's disc binding. Then I get a push notification from my Michaels app, because who doesn't have the Michaels and Joanne's app, that all of their Happy Planner, which is a brand that makes disc bound planners and accoutrement, and that all of their planner stuff was on Doorbuster last Saturday. That's where I went last Saturday. Ah, look at it. So I bought a punch. I didn't buy one of their planners. I bought a punch and I bought the discs. And then I got um, tab dividers from Happy Planner. So there's some tab dividers. They come in a set of eight. So I got two packs of eight. And then I found on Amazon, you could buy like just a pack of covers of different kinds of covers. And I thought that might give it some more stability. I had thought about just laminating. Oh, oh, oh no. I thought about just laminating the first page and punching the first page, but these are so pretty. See, it says plan a happy life. I love it. Sorry guys, it's, it's dark, dark outside. So I have my ring light up and you're getting a bit of a glare. And then the back, I put the floral to the inside. So I'm not usually like a big floral girl and the swipes on the back. So I got everything printed out and punched and I'm going to show you guys, I'm just going to give you little flashes of some of the printables and kind of show you how I have it set up for the year. Uh, I think this is, I think the planner from Jen, it's either $11.99 or $12. It's around $12. Fantastic value. I mean, the amount of time that she has spent in this, I can't even tell you. So before my January tab, so you can see I tabbed out all the months, January, February, March. Can't quite see April. You can in real life, May. Um, I kind of did all of the yearly stuff. Kind of, um, she's doing a year long, ABC challenge. So there's printables for that. There's one for like monthly focus. So you can put, if you like pick a project or two, you want to focus on each month to really get some progress in or maybe finish. So I've already, I, I didn't want to plan those out for the whole year quite yet. I'm probably going to be on a month to month kind of thing with that, but I did pick out, um, a focus piece for January is going to be Promise of Spring uh, because I started that a while ago. She also has a whip list. She, there's There was also a printable for whip cards. If you watch Jen at all, she has cards for all of her whips. And so she has a printable of whip cards so you can print out as many as you need. Um, I have to say, I think these have like 17, hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 17. There are 17 lines on each of these pages of the whip list. And I was like, oh, I don't know how many I'm going to print out. So I printed out like four. I only have, I only have like two and a skosh pages. But this was great because it forced me to go through my big calendar. So I didn't really start tracking like what I was working on. After I finished Abby stocking last year, I wanted to keep stitching. I realized I really liked stitching and I didn't have any projects. And that's when I kind of sort of found Etsy and I started stitching that Yippie Kaye and I did Holiday Armadillo. So I found Etsy 
kind of at the end of last year. And then you guys know I took a big tumble down the rabbit hole in like March. Uh, I started Harry Potter book covers the 1st of April. So that, no, yeah, the beginning of April. But it wasn't until May that I started actually keeping track. So you can see April, nothing. I ended up writing in there what day I started Harry Potter book cover. So I started that on April 3rd. Um, but it wasn't until May that I actually started keeping track of what I worked on each day and started. So I went back and looked to see what I worked on and so I could write down the start date of all of my whips. And so you can see here, and I love this because you can, the thing I like about the disc binding is you can add to it, so you get a punch that punches this like shape, and you can put pages in and out. So you can add pages, you can move them around, and it'll lie flat. So it's kind of a hybrid between a spiral bind and a binder, and so far I'm loving it. Okay, so I went through my whole calendar and wrote out, like if, I would see what I worked on every day. If I if it was finished, I knew it was finished. I didn't put it in here. So Harry Potter book covers, I started on April 3rd. There are two other whips that I have that are current whips. I don't know when I started them. They were clearly started before May. I probably started them in April sometime because I didn't until March. Until March and when I started School of Magical Stitches in March, I really only had a couple, like three projects going, and these were some of them. So I, those were the only ones that I don't have a start date for, but I know it was sometime in April, probably. So then I went through and did up my whole whip list. So when I do my whip parade, I'm gonna do it in order of when I started it. So there you go, and you guys will see all my whips. And so I really like this because now I can add to them and it has a place, it has a place for your designer and fabric um, and finish. I'm not gonna put all the details in for each one because I have the other uh, journals that I'm gonna put in all the details for all the whips. But I like that as I start things, I can add this and I, then I can go back and if I wanna work on my oldest whip, I'll know what that is. <laughs> And hopefully a lot of these will be finishes next year. What do we think? Uh, there is a printable for finishes that I also have in there. And then you go into the monthly layouts. She has one that is kind of a highlights where you can do goals, um, have a list of dates to remember and a place to put new starts, maybe plan new starts or things you start. You know, watch that. There is a monthly calendar. So you can have the goal of stitching 24 hours during the month or 24 minutes a day. There are the acrostics for each month. Those are still gonna be free in her group. She's still gonna provide the holiday calendars and the blank calendars and the acrostics free in her 24 hours of cross stitch um, group, but they'll be released like at the end of the month for the next month. But if you buy the planner, you have the acrostics for the whole year. So I'm not gonna show those. <laughs> but if you're a super planner and want to plan out ahead, you can because you'll have the acrostics for the whole year. One thing that I also did, because I haven't figured out yet how I'm gonna keep track of like my monthly challenges for things like full coverage fanatics, but I printed out, I don't know if you can see it because the light is really blowing it out. But I found a free printable. I'll link the one I use below, but there's like, if you Google dot grid free printable, there's a bunch out there. I just printed out a plain piece of dot grid paper and added that so that I can, I need to figure out how I'm gonna keep track of stuff for, for coverage fanatics. But that's a great thing. Like you can add just plain line paper in here if you wanted. And then she has weekly, uh, one of the extra, Printables is like a weekly plan and recap and I love it because it has like spots for It has Sunday through Saturday a place for little notes and reminders on the side Which is perfect because I always need I'm always 
right in the margins of my planners. This has a place to write in the margins and it has a spot for like what I'm stitching each day and it's got four spots, which is perfect for me because there have been times I've worked on four different projects in a day, at least three. I'll at least minimum two. I'm working on a minimum of two projects every day, sometimes up to four. So I love, whoop. And so I printed out like 56 or 57 of these. And then she has a, um, a recap printable. That's a recap of the month so that you can like tweak next month's plan. You can keep track of any finishes you have for the month. Um, I love that she has multiple places to keep track of things. So like you can put your finishes on your list of year long finishes. You can also write the finish date on your whip list, but then also on any month, you can go back and look at see what you finished in that month. I love that. So there's that for every single month. I have all the months in here. And then I have a tab with some of the other miscellaneous printables that she included. There are some printables for um, the marathon. So if you do any of the marathons, you can, there's planning, there's stitch plan for the 24 hours, place to track food. Um, you can, there's a blank calendar. There's a bunch of just for fun pages. This guys is fantastic. I love it. And what I love is as with the um, disc binding is as like the planner can kind of evolve with you because I mean, I know Jen, she's probably going to come up with other printables. She's her mind works in wonderful, mysterious ways. So I can add to this. I can add other sheets. I can add other tracking sheets as I come up with them or other super smart cross stitchers come up with them. I can add to it. So that is my planner for next year. Thank you so much. And so I've already gone in and put in some, like some rough starts. There are a few things I know I'm going to start. Um, I have my birthday start already in here. For March, um, I have Anna Forest Grew in here in April on Arbor Day, um, which is, here I can tell you which day it is because it's in my planner. It is April 24th, the last Friday of the month of April is Arbor Day and I will be starting Anna Forest Grew. I also have, speaking of 2020 plans, already planning all the stitch alongs, guys. I'm so excited for this one. You saw this project when I showed everything that I kitted up last week, and it inspired the lovely ladies at Stitching with the Sisterlies to start it as well and make it an official stitch along with myself. The lovely ladies of Stitching with the Sisterlies, I will link their channel below because they are hoot, you guys. They are so funny. If you're not watching them, you need to go check them out. Um, and also Michelle Bendy. So we are going to be starting in January with a projected finish date of November 2nd. We are going to start Suffrage Act. So if you guys want to stitch it along with us, it's going to be, this is a beautiful chart. Uh, it's the centennial of the uh, Suffrage Act next year. Women's right to vote, 100 years, very important election next year. And so I am going to be stitching on this. And we're going to start in January. I think I am going to start, what did, what did, let me look at my handy dandy planner. I have that I'm going to start it on January 6th and with a projected finish date of November 2nd. So if you guys want to stitch along with us, the hashtag is SWTS, stitching with the sisterlies, SWTS suffrage. And I'll put the hashtag below. So Still plenty of time to get that all up. I don't have my fabric picked, but I got all my flosses and I'm going to be starting that in January. So come stitch that along with us. Okay guys, I think that that's it. I don't think I have anything else for you. I'm not gonna do a giveaway this week because I'm gonna be, I don't know when I'm gonna be back for a regular video. Um, Cause next week will be whip parade and then I will be back sometime after the first of the year and I just don't want to let it go that long. So giveaways will resume after the first of the year. And in the meantime, I hope you guys all have a wonderful end of December. Um, no matter what you celebrate, whether it's Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, if you just celebrate 
being with friends and family during this end of the year, closing out the year season. I hope you have a wonderful one. If it's a tough time of year for you, because I know that it is for a lot of people, I just, I hope you have friends and family that you can lean on. And um, I hope the beginning of the year will be a fresh new start for all of us. So until I see you guys in the new year, cheers and happy stitching. Love you guys.